In the days following the earthquake and tsunami in Japan, the U.S. began monitoring radiation from the leaking nuclear power plants. Most of the public attention went to the air monitoring, which showed little or no radiation coming our way. But things were different on the rainwater side. The level that was detected on March 24th was 41 times the drinking water standard in Olympia. Jerry Paulette of the watchdog group Heart of America Northwest is reviewing radioactive iodine-131 numbers released by the Environmental Protection Agency last spring. Our government said no health levels, no health level standards are being exceeded when in fact the rainwater in the Northwest was reaching levels 130 times the drinking water standard. Elevated rainwater samples were collected in Portland, Olympia, and Boise, which had the highest. We've got some lemon cucumbers, snap peas, basil. Got to have fresh vegetables. Out of the, the same water fell on Kate Constanet's garden and was collected in her rain barrel. She did not know about the elevated levels. Certainly not use this for the vegetable garden. In fact, I probably wouldn't have even planted a vegetable garden if I had known that. But EPA officials say the data was there for anyone to read on their website. And a spokesman sent us this statement. Since iodine-131 has a very short half-life of approximately eight days, the levels seen in rainwater were expected to be relatively short in duration. State health agencies added they constantly monitored public drinking water sources and never found levels even approaching the unhealthy range. And even the watchdog group admits watering plants with water exposed only briefly to those levels is unlikely to cause health problems. But they say that's information the public deserves to know. The Omaha Public Power District is stepping up its efforts to protect the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant from floodwaters. Crews installed a new barrier around the plant and are now pumping out floodwaters from the Missouri River. The eight-foot-tall water-filled barrier replaces the berm that collapsed two weeks ago. OPPD officials say the plant is safe and key areas have stayed dry. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant has restarted a system to decontaminate highly radioactive water after replacing the faulty part that caused another halt of the system. Tokyo Electric Power Company stopped the system's operation until around 5 p.m. on Tuesday after workers spotted a leak from a joint connecting a hose to a pipe. The pipe feeds fed chemicals to break down radioactive materials. TEPCO says the steel joint was corroded by the chemicals and it had been replaced with a stainless steel one. On Sunday, TEPCO replaced a polyvinyl joint with a steel joint after a water leak was found in the device. The decontamination facilities are a key part of treating and recycling radioactive water that is used to cool the reactors. But the system has suffered one problem after another, ahead of TEPCO's target of a controlled cooling of the reactors by July 17th. This will be its first step in its schedule to bring the plant under control. On Tuesday, TEPCO also finished preparations to inject nitrogen into the containment vessel of the number three reactor to prevent a hydrogen explosion. The utility plans to start injecting nitrogen in a few days after receiving approval from the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency. The operator of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant continues efforts to prevent a hydrogen explosion. It will begin fixing the pipeline at the number three reactor on Tuesday afternoon to prepare for its nitrogen injection operation. Tokyo Electric Power Company says workers have confirmed last Friday that the pipes can be connected to the reactor container. Blop, blop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. The utility has set a target of July 17th to complete the task of injecting nitrogen. It has already injected the gas into the number one reactor in April and the number two reactor in June. We are planning to connect the pipe to the container around 1 p.m. on Tuesday. We want to begin the injection as soon as we get the approval from the safety agency. The utility reported its plan to the Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency on Monday. It described the safety measures to limit radiation exposure to the workers and how the injection will impact the container. The government of Fukushima Prefecture is going to begin testing all its cattle farms for radioactivity. 
This comes after radioactive cesium exceeding the government standard was detected in cattle shipped from a farm in Minamisoma City. The meat has already been distributed for sale without being tested for radioactive material. I need to discuss the issue with related ministries, agencies, and Fukushima Prefecture to consider testing all cattle from marked off areas of the prefecture. Since the disaster, the farm has shipped 17 head of cattle for slaughter, six of which were sent to Tokyo and Tochigi prefectures. From there, the beef was distributed to retailers in eight other prefectures. The meat was not tested for radioactive material. Fukushima Prefecture has now decided to inspect all of the cattle in the, in the evacuation zone around the disabled nuclear power plant and at least one head of the cattle from all other farms within the prefecture. But there are concerns that there is not enough equipment to test all the animals. The machines are also used to check pork and other meats, as well as vegetables. About 90% of cattle from Fukushima are sent to meat processing plants in other prefectures, where local governments are responsible for the safety inspections. However, the local governments have only been able to test less than 1% of the cattle from Fukushima. A research facility in Ibaraki Prefecture has begun screening residents from neighboring Fukushima Prefecture for internal radiation. The Japan Atomic Energy Agency tested 28 people from Namie Town on Tuesday, including pregnant women, parents, and their children. They were screened to determine if they have absorbed radioactive materials through food and drinks. The facility in Tokai Village plans to examine about 2,800 people from Fukushima Prefecture through next month. An official at the facility says he will explain carefully to each person the details of their test results. People in Fukushima Prefecture are worried about internal radiation. I'd like to help ease their anxieties. Does it work? No idea. It's probably junk. Well, that's probably the problem. If you knew it worked, that she got rid of boils, you'd probably have no problem selling it. Nobody in advertising wants to get rid of boils, Julia. They're good little money spinners. All we want to do is offer hope of getting rid of them. And that's where I'm blocked. One of Japan's largest fishing ports it is reopened for business well, four months after it was wiped out in the tsunami of March 11th. Ishinomaki lies on the coast of Miyagi, Pre Miyagi Prefecture, the area worst hit by the disaster. Total catches at Ishinomaki in the last fiscal year were the third highest in the country, but the tsunami destroyed almost all the facilities, including keys and processing plants. Electricity and running water supplies have now been hooked up at the port and the market reopened on Tuesday inside a temporary tent. On the first day, squid and flatfish were among the seafood up for auction. Sellers say that because this was the first day of business in four months, squid was selling for double its usual price. It's really raised our spirits. I'm excited to see what prizes we get. Today is a special day. So I came here to buy, no matter what the price. The president of the fish market says that reopening the port symbolizes the efforts to rebuild the region and people's hopes that their fishing business will flourish once again. <laughs>